Hi, my name is Don Tipping. I'm here at Seven Seeds Farm in Southern Oregon. This is also the home of Siskiyou Seeds, which is in year 12 of being a bioregional seed growing, trialing, breeding, and distribution network for our area and the larger Pacific Northwest bioregion and beyond. I wanted to share a few of the points that I think about of why I'm excited to grow seed and do this work and why I've really devoted the last 25 years of my life to doing this. So if I go back to when I first started farming, I was doing produce and medicinal herbs and uh, soft fruits like raspberries, strawberries, and tree fruits, and then began growing contract seed for Seeds of Change back in 1997 and gradually began to do contract seed production and a wide diversity of flowers, herbs, and vegetables for about a dozen different national seed companies. And then in 2009 began the initiative to do Siskiyou seeds, starting as a small little thing. And now we've grown to where we have about 700 varieties that we sell through a network of seed racks in Oregon and Northern California, and then through a online web store. So one of the things that I think about that is really continues to captivate me about seed is it's a way for the land and the farm to express its individuality. Over time, I've begun to see that certain things grow well here and certain things don't, but we can also train or adapt uh, the various important plants that can grow here to produce seed and then select and trial and, and adapt them to produce better. So what we sell, we know grows here. And every we if so, a crop doesn't grow here well, we just don't sell seed of it. So that idea of the farm individuality is the unique combination of microclimates, minerals, my talents, that of the crew that work, we work together, that moves through the seed to go out to the people and it, it becomes this particular you know, unique thing about what we do that differentiates us from other people. When you're doing wholesale production, there isn't really an opportunity for that to express itself. So you also that gives us a bit of a platform to feel more engaged from a sociocultural and even spiritual level to the work of, of seeds. The other thing that we are doing is that we're farming less land now than we did say five or 10 years ago, yet our growth sales are higher because we're adding value to what we grow. And again, there's a feedback loop of the research aspect of our farm doing the trialing and selection and breeding work so that what we are eventually offering for retail sale represents a curated collection, if you will, of tried and true varieties. So that enables us to stay economic on the land and not have to have side hustles. Another thing that I have learned over time is that by carefully selecting different crops, we can flatten our labor curve. So we no longer have these peaks in the summertime or particular early fall where we're really maxed out for labor and then we have no work in the winter. So by doing a lot of biennial seed crops, for us, we're planting a lot of things in the late summer fall that will overwinter for seed. And these could be leeks, onions, garlic, different brassicas, fava beans, uh, root crops such as celery, parsnips, and that side of thing enables us to have work eat more evenly spaced throughout the season and then seed cleaning in the fall and germination tests and then the order fulfillment work all winter and through the early spring. So that's enabled us to keep and retain employees and have an economic basis to strive to provide a living wage for people. Another unique thing to think about is by having a defined market sector, whereas when we used to grow wholesale seed, we were pretty much growing for farmers. Now I'd say we're mostly working with gardeners. So there's a strong education component to the work that we do. And just uh, through our blog, through our email newsletter, YouTube channel of helping birth what I see, I like to call the agrarian renaissance, you know, of a return to the roots of decentralized systems for growing our food, growing our medicines, growing the flowers and the grains on a local basis all around. So by having a bioregional seed company, we are, are almost like a linchpin that connects many different sectors of the food and sociocultural systems that ultimately provide a basis for all the rest of culture and commerce. So, you know, in closing, 
there's a permaculture principle that says that if you love what you do, you'll never work another day in your life. And I very much feel like that. This is my 30th year farming. And I'm constantly amazed at there seems to be no end to the challenges and the unique possibilities that exist in every growing season, every new crop. You know, for instance, I'm growing bitter melon this year after talking to a friend in China who's an herbalist who shared that that's his favorite vegetable. And I know nothing about bitter melons. I don't think I'll ever exhaust the incredible agrodiversity biodiversity out there in terms of learning how the plant grows, what its reproductive mechanism is, who's the pollinator, what's the isolation distance, how do we get seed, how do you germinate the seed, and it's just like, you know, grabbing the, the tiger by the tail, if you will, and it will take you along on this, this incredible journey through agrobiodiversity and seeing, you know, what all the unique possibilities are. And I think having that passion requires having enough diversity of the different tasks on the farm and the land and the different crops and the, the mixture of challenges so that you never reach burnout. So, you know, I want to encourage each of you to find the place within that, that bigger circle of the, the research elements, the advocacy work, the farming work, the... Um, you know, the laboratory work of the germination tests and disease testing, um, the marketing work, uh, the education work, and so many pieces that all fit together, these, you know, intermeshing gears of what makes a whole seed system. And I'm so fascinated by continually finding ways to look at that from different perspectives. And all the while keeping the farming part because I feel like you should always have your hands in the dirt and not lose uh, sight of, of the magic of germination, pollination, the biology that is an inherent part of, I feel like for like myself, what gives me a platform to articulate why you may want to buy seeds from me. And part of it is just that like, hey, come in deeper and have the... The magic of the seed uh, revealed to you and I'm it pauses me to think my friend Bill McDormand once shared he had a picture of a, uh, a thumb drive and a seed and he said which one can hold more data and when you think about a seed not only can it hold an incredible amount of information but it also can reproduce itself and none of our technology can do that so by aligning yourself with these life forces, particularly those that can self-perpetuate, sure, they may need a little bit of help from us humans, we will always have a job. And you know, one last thought that is held in stark relief to this current time we're in of this global pandemic is that seeds are a recession-proof uh, livelihood. When people are doing well and they have money, gardening is the number one American pastime, and they want to have gardens and, and spend that time with their families or by themselves out in their garden. When times are tough, and we're seeing that right now, our sales up until this point are about quadruple what they normally are um, for our web store. When times are tough, people grow gardens because they have uncertainty about our food systems and they want to grow more of their own food. And again, just dovetailing back into how can we create decentralized systems for meeting our own needs and shortening supply lines? And that is, I feel like, one of the most vital works to address industrial late stage capitalism is how to decentralize our food systems. And it starts with seed, and then we have to be engaged with the farmers and the, the chefs and the people that eat it and the food justice activists and who's getting it in the school gardens. and that whole big picture and you it's almost like how John Muir said once that when we tug on any part of nature we realize it's connected to every other part and nature is very much like seed in this instance of you can't have a whole food system without a whole seed system and certain parts of our food economy have been asleep to this for a while and now is an incredible time to hit strike the hammer when the iron is hot and get involved in seed and it will lead you on a beautiful path thank you <laughs>